Chapter 13, Pediatrics and Geriatric Procedures. Again, this covers the chapter objectives that will be covered in this chapter. Pediatric patients collecting blood from a pediatric or geriatric patient requires um, much clinical knowledge and training on proper technique because there is the difference between drawing a pediatric with a routine butterfly needle versus a heel stick. Both age groups require extra care in blood collection. There are differences that relate to anatomy and physiology in a child. Um, develop compliance and relating psycholog psychologically with a child of various age and developmental stages. The other thing we got to be aware of is that the anatomy and physiology of a child is significantly smaller than an adult, as seen in this picture. We observe various techniques techniques as they are performed by healthcare workers experienced in pediatric phlebotomy. Practice the techniques to develop the necessary skills and learn how to talk with children of various ages to calm them for blood collection. A calm, confident approach. Correctly identify the patient. Hospitalized infants usually have the identification bracelet on his or her ankle, so that is something we need to be aware of. Newborns not yet named are usually identified by their last name and identification number, and this correlates with the patient's um, mother or father's ID bands as well. Children's past experience with blood collection definitely takes and need to be taken into consideration. We develop a plan for optimal success in blood collection and place yourself at the child's eye level to explain and demonstrate the procedure. As shown here, we let them play with the stethoscope on a baby doll to show what we're going to do prior to performing. Um, establish guidelines with the child and parents. The parents should be on board to help, and if they can't, let them know that a staff member would be on board as well. Tell the child that the procedure will be painful. Don't lie. Um, encourage parents' involvement. As we can see here, we're showing the procedure on a baby. Psychological Psychological response to needles and pain. Children between the ages of 1 and 2 may have extreme reactions to painless procedures, such as taking a temperature, while children between 3 and 5 perceive pain as punishment for bad behavior. Again, children between the ages of 6 and 12 are more likely to relate pain to past experiences, where children between the ages of 13 and 17 are frequently embarrassed to show fear. This is the age group we kind of need to watch out for for um, predisposition to fainting. Distraction techniques. Children over the age of two respond well to distraction techniques to help them cope and lessen distress. Examples of distraction are blowing bubbles or pinwheels, counting, reading a book or looking at a video, um, listening to music, singing, and talking in a gentle voice about something enjoyable. And I will show a video of different distraction techniques that's used in the phlebotomy field. Room location. The best room, the best room location for painful procedures is a treatment room away from children's bed or playroom. The child cannot be moved to a treatment room, maintain privacy by drawing a curtain between the beds and speaking in a calm, quiet manner. The equipment needed for a child use shoulder needles if possible, butterfly needles, keep threatening looking supplies needles out of sight. We can cover them with a disposable cloth. Place goggles or face shields on after greeting the child as this may cause fear. Holding the child may be required to ensure that the child does not move his or her limb during blood collection, so this might require us to get the parents involved. Restraining techniques should be compassionate and safe and shouldn't be performed quickly. A supportive parent who has been properly instructed can assist with restraining while providing comfort to the child, but you've got to gauge the parent. This is a supine lying position for restraining a child. Neonatal infant positioning. Neonates infants, infants younger than three months usually do not require restraints. Can be managed by a healthcare worker alone and swaddling helps comfort in an upset newborn. Children may become combative, kicking and thrashing if force is used. So if the risk of injury to a child or healthcare worker is likely, we're going to discontinue a blood collection attempt and notify the nurse or physician. EMLA, it's a topical antiseptic that's used to decrease the needle stick pain in a child. It's 
optimal um, anesthesia occurs about 45 to 60 minutes. It may last as long as two to three hours. It's a cream. It's applied to the skin as a patch or a cream that is is then covered with a transparent adhesive dressing. We do not use this if the child is allergic to local anesthetics, though. There's also a spray um, numbing agent that's also used in the hospital setting. And this is the use of the topical antiseptic. Um, for babies, they'll use oral sucrose in a pacifier and swaddling. It's a 25% solution of sucrose can be prepared by mixing four teaspoons of water with one teaspoon of sugar, carefully administered by oral syringe dropper. Um, a sucrose sniffle is given two minutes before a heel stick. Its actions last about five minutes. PPE gowns, gloves, and masks will be worn as indicated before entering the room. Um, and also please be aware, again, the proper hand washing procedures prior to every procedure. Latex allergy alert, signpost on the door, bracelet indicating latex allergy. Um, spina bifida, congenital urinary tract abnormalities, and neurogenic bladders are particularly sensitive to latex, so we need to keep that in mind. Microcapillary skin puncture, collect only the smallest amounts of blood so that the effects of the blood volume reduction are minimal. Overcollecting during phlebotomy may, may require packed cell transfusion in an infant. And please be aware that we want to avoid overcollection, record the amount of blood collected from an infant and child because we need to track weight to volume so that we don't introduce hydrogenic anemia in, in infants. Uh, microcapillary skin puncture order of test collection. Again, remember that the hematology CBC tube comes first to minimize platelet clumping, clumping, chemistry specimens, and then blood bank specimens, skin puncture sites. The heel is the most desirable site for skin puncture of an infant or neonate, and we're going to use the most medial or lateral plantar surface of the heel, and I will show you this in class. Skin puncture sites do not use the central area of the infant's heel for blood collection. For children age one and older, the palmar surface of the tip of the third or fourth finger is most frequently used. And this is a image of the heel stick lancet being used on an infant foot. Um, heel stick procedure, I will go over this in detail in class so you can review these next slides on your own. Again, we always have to identify the infant properly, and this does get, um, we do need parents' permission prior to drawing the child. We're going to warm the site. If it is cool or blood gas specimen is to be collected, we're going to pre-warm the foot with a warm, wet towel or chemical heel warming pack, according to policy, and wipe the heel dry after removing the warm towel. Worming the heel increases blood flow and arterializes the specimen. It's essential for collecting specimens for capillary blood gas analysis. Warm the site with a commercially um, warming pack or wrap a warm wet towel at a temperature no more than 42 degrees C around the infant's foot. Um, Pre-warm the site for optimal collection, um, depending on the institution's policy. We can encase the towel in a plastic bag to help retain heat and keep the patient's bed dry. We're going to pace, position the baby in a supine position with the knee at the open end of the bassinet. This position allows the foot to hang lower than the torso, improving blood flow. When the baby is in acceptable position for this procedure, we clean the heel with an antiseptic swab and we allow that to dry. As this image shows, um, we do not touch the incision site or allow the heel to come in contact with any non sterile item or surface. This is an example of tender foot puncture device with its blister pack. Um, we will be making note that this comes out of a clean pack every time for a procedure with a baby. Once the safety clip is removed, do not push the trigger or touch the blade slot. And we're going to hold the infant's foot firmly but gently to prevent sudden movement, excess, or excessive milking or squeezing, which causes hemolysis and dilutes the blood with intestinal and intracellular fluids, 
we got to be aware that we don't want to excessively squeeze um, or cause any issues with hemolysis when we draw from a baby. We're going to raise a foot above the baby's heart level and carefully select a safe incision site. So we will place the blade surface the device flush against the heel so that its center point is vertically aligned with its desired incision site as shown here. After triggering the device, you're going to immediately remove the device from the infant's heel and dispose of it in a biohazard sharps container. This is what it looks like after it has been activated and you will start to see a round drop of blood on the infant's heel. We're using only a dry, sterile gauze pad. Gently wipe the first droplet of blood that appears on the incision site, taking care not to make direct wound contact with the collection container or capillary tube, and we're going to fill to the desired level. Using only a dry, sterile gauze pad, gently wipe away the first droplet, and taking care not to make direct contact. This is a pipette system that's used sometimes to collect blood from babies. Um, we could also use a capillary tube. It doesn't require a lot of pressure after we're done. We'll place a gauze pad to the incision site until bleeding is seized. This step will help prevent a hematoma from forming. And this is just an example of that. You're going to label the specimen container and verify identification and record the time of collection. And again, please be mindful to check the infant's heel puncture site for late bleeding or inflammation. Skin puncture blood um, less desirable because it contains blood from capillaries, venules, arterioles, and tissue fluids. The specimen is temporarily exposed to room air and it allows for a brief exchange of gases, both CO2 and O2, before sealing the specimen from the air. So it's not as desirable, um, especially for blood gases. And it's an open collection system. Um, arterial blood or capillary blood gases for babies. We're going to notify laboratory personnel of the urgent blood gas test to be performed. And then, again, we're going to check the infant's bed for any equipment or trash so we make sure not to leave anything behind. You're going to deliver the sample immediately to the lab, and delays of more than 15 minutes at room temperature will affect the results. Neonatal screening. Neonatal screening is important for early detection, diagnosis, and treatment of certain genetic, metabolic, and infectious diseases. Blood spot testing for screening is performed before a baby is 72 hours old. And this is the equipment that will be used for this. You're going to introduce yourself, identify the baby. You're going to fill out the information on the screening card here. You're going to warm the site, wash your hands, and then to prevent contamination, do not touch um, with hands or gloves, any part of the filter paper circles before, during, or after collection. We're not going to allow the filter paper to come in contact with substances such as alcohol, formula, water, powder, antiseptic solutions, or lotion. And again, you'll clean the incision site, allow it to dry, and do not touch the incision site or allow the heel to come in contact with any of the non sterile items or surfaces. And again, you'll still perform the same technique for activating and using the heel stick lancet. You're going to lightly touch a printed side of the filter paper with the blood drop and fill each printed circle, as shown here. You're going to allow the blood to soak through and completely fill the circle with a single application of a large blood drop. The circle if the circle does not fill entirely, wipe the heel and express another large drop onto a different circle. Do not add a second drop of blood to a previously used circle. You only use one side of the filter paper. Dry blood spots on a clean, dry, flat, non-absorbent surface for a minimum of four hours and press a sterile gauze pad sponge against the puncture site until bleeding is stopped. Again, we're going to elevate the heel above the body and check the infant's um, heel puncture site for late bleeding. Complete the remaining information on the screen card so that follow-up can be done if the results are abnormal and place the screening card in an appropriate envelope and send it to the laboratory within 24 hours. Capillary blood collection finger sticks usually performed for children older than one, years, one year of age may be necessary if a child has damaged veins from repeated venipuncture if the veins are covered with bandages or casts. 
Do not perform a finger stick if the finger is swollen, edema, cyanotic, or infected.